Hi, welcome again to 3x point. So in this session, we are going to be setting up our environment. So with I believe you've watched the uh, video on database normalization and you must have uh, watched the very first hands on which introduced you to IT generally, uh, which also introduced you to, you know, our DBMSC. So you already have some good foundational knowledge and for us to use the tools to do the things that we we will be doing going on in this course we need to set up our environment now our environment depends on what uh, system you have it depends on if you have if you're using a mac or a windows operating system if you or if you're using an os 10 operating system you know there are different approaches but generally speaking i will go with just one particular you know more like one size fits all kind of approach so and that approach is by using virtualization so what do i mean by virtualization uh let me bring up my slide to show you some demonstration so i'm going to bring up my slide now and looking at this what i'm trying to explain here is let's say this is you right here oops let me change the direction of this right this is you this is you having your own laptop now all the tools that you'll be installing you can install them on your laptop directly but that's not really a good practice especially when you're when you just started learning um, a technology you want to be able to test that technology first before you when you're good at it then you can now start installing things on your laptop by that time you understand what you're doing so that you don't mess up your la laptop to a point where you have to start doing on installation reinstallation and you know you can mess up some registry um, settings on your on your computer and you know you may have bought your lap laptop for a very very expensive amount of money but i don't want you to you know find yourself in that position because i found myself in that position some years ago and i learned the very hard way but you, sh you don't have to go through the same thing so what i normally tell people to do is have a visualization technology on your laptop right so but then you need to ensure that you have a virtualization enabled on your computer so you can you can either google um virtualization how to enable virtual virtualization on your computer that is if you don't have it enabled already right now i won't cover that in this video but i would endeavor i'm not promising but i'll endeavor to cover that in a separate video if you ever have any problem like that whereby you are unable to do what, what i'm about to show you just because you don't have virtualization enabled you can simply just send an email to info at 3xpoint.com or you send out some an email uh, a message on facebook and then we can give you support on how to troubleshoot that but if you're lucky enough to have the setting um, enabled by default then you can just go ahead and do this but i mean until you get to a particular point in the installation you might not know if you have it enabled or not in some computers you might be able to actually easily know by right clicking on this space down here and then go to task manager so if you open up task manager like this go to performance and then click on CPU right CPU is where you want to go now if you look at the bottom right you will see virtualization enabled so if you're lucky enough to have this then you're lucky so you need to check this first if you're using windows operating system if you're using um, mac uh, to be honest i don't know how to check for its virtualization but um, you can just follow along for now if you run into errors and troubles in, in, uh, for this reason then let us know and then we would uh, give you support okay so that's enough about that 
So talking about virtualization, so what we basically want to do is we want to create computers inside your computer. And that's just all virtualization is all about. So we're going to be installing computer inside your computer. So that means the computer will be installing, will have its own memory, will have its own CPU, will have its own disk. You can click on the start button. You can, you know, go into the file system. You can do the same things that you do on your laptop. The only difference is just that it is not a physical computer. It is just a virtual computer. All right. So having said that, I will show you the things that you need to install to get that started so that when you install them inside the virtualized computer, then you will be working from there. You won't be working from your computer. Anytime you want to connect to your database, you will be connecting to the virtualized computer on your computer. So let's get to work. So open your browser and uh, go to Google. The first thing we want to download is VMware. That's the software that would enable us to install computer. VMware is not the computer itself. I'll repeat that because a lot of people make that mistake. VMware is not the computer but it is the channel through which you get your computers created. So go to, actually I think I already typed it somewhere. So yeah, so this is where you're going to type in Google. Download VMware Workstation Player. Right. So once you write that, just go to find the one that says VMware.com download player and then right click open a new tab I have it open in this new tab already you will come to this page and you'll see options if you're using uh, VMware Workstation for Windows this is for Windows if you're using Windows 64 bit then you can just hit download now this is for Linux but I'm very sure a lot of people wouldn't be using Linux let's actually find for uh, VMware. Ah, yeah, now I remember. It's not actually called Workstation. For those who use Mac, it's actually called VMware Fusion. Yes. So that's what you want. So download VMware Fusion. Let's see what that brings up. Okay, I'm going to close this. It appears that's not the correct website. So what we're looking for don't go for this fusion 8 by go for download vmware fusion 8 and the website let's just go there it should look like this so when you come here you want to go to download so you can see vmware fusion 8.0 and then it says uh, intel base max you know and then you can just click on download here All right download VMware Fusion for Mac OS 10 yeah so for those who use Mac this is what you need so once you have that downloaded there are two more things we need to download the first thing is uh, you want to download SQL server uh, where is it where is it okay let's just type it download v uh, sorry um, sql server 2014 express express edition is just good enough for you so you would see this link here microsoft.com download express you know just open it in new tab and come here now it is always very important to read things documentation and things very well before you just you know hit download so here it says details so go to details this is not where you're going to download this is where you're going to download actually but I just want you to see that um, so you can read all the things that are here if you if you like so you know the meaning of each of these things so basically if you see 32x86 that means if you're using a computer that is 32 bit 
so anything 86 86 is 32 bit but if you are on 64 bit then this is what you need so how do I know if I'm using 32 bit or, or 64 bit so when you come to your let me close it and go back so you can see this um, uh, Windows Explorer the file Explorer you can, if you click on it go to this PC or you may what you have may be different it might be this computer or just computer so but that's where you want to go right click and hit properties here you would see this is where you know if it's 64 bit or 32 bit so you can see system type mine is 64 bit operating system right so that's what you need okay so now that I know that I use 64 bit I'll come back here and then I would have decided okay I'm going for 64 bit so I have no business with any other thing that's not 64 bit now there are two other options there so there is 64 bit SQL XP R SQL means SQL XP EXPR means Express now what I'm actually more interested in is this 64 bit SQL X EXP R ADV ADV meaning advanced so I need at least 1.1 gig to be able to download this file so you must make sure you have enough um, disk space before you go ahead with the download we haven't we're not talking about installation yet this is just downloading it and you can go into system requirement read up the requirement there's requirement for processor there's requirement for ram you must have minimum of 512 mb and then minimum of 4.2 gig of hard disk space this is for the installation not for the download so you must have at least 4.2 to install it and you can read more instructions and additional information if you want so now that you have information you can just click on download and all the uh, 32 bit 64 bit we're talking about just now it will bring it up and you can just scroll down to the one you're interested in and in our case what we want is this one SQL XPRD advanced the reason is because um, there is still another video where when you watch that you understand more the difference between when you see SQL management no not SQL when you see management studio like this MGMT studio either 32 bit or 64 bit when you see this and when you see um, like this that we want to I install there's different between them so the difference is just that this advanced means it has a combination of both the management studio the database engine and a lot more features than if you downloaded just the management studio if you downloaded just the management studio what you have is just a client tool that helps you to connect to the database engine but you don't have the engine so what we are downloading is both the management studio which is the client tool and the engine so once you have that clicked or selected or checked just click on next and the next thing is you'll see it's you know it will start downloading depending on the speed of internet you have it might take a, a couple of minutes or hours you know it all depends on that okay so we have that downloaded as well so we, we already have VM where we have um, SQL engine and management to download and finally we now want the operating system that we want to download so you can go to Google again and write this download Windows Server 2012 R2 evaluation evaluation means you only have access to it for three three months so meaning after three months you probably won't be able to use it it's just like a test and the whole idea is f that by the end of three months you already have enough knowledge after going through this course and by then you can now install it on your laptop properly you know so that because this whole process may involve 
you installing, running into issues, re <laughs> removing the installation. I've seen people go through that a lot. You know, you don't want to mess up your computer. So once you've you know have that sorted, then you'll be free to 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 do it on your own computer. Right. So you click on on this one. You, you, I think the first one that comes up is fine. What you're interested in is the ISO file is what you're looking for. ISO. Um, what it means, I don't know what the uh, the abbreviation means, but what it typically means is it's like a virtualized CD. You know, in those days, when you want to install anything, you you put a disk, a CD, you know, in the driver, and then you run the installation media. But in this case, everything is virtualized. So now, with the putting that those CD online, like you know, a regular file, you can download and you can just run. You mount it, they call it mount, so you can mount it and then use it for installation. But in this case, we're actually not going to mount it, we'll just put it inside VMware directly. You'll see that in action very soon. So, when you click on that, it comes to this page. Now, this will require you to have like a Microsoft account, so maybe Outlook or Live or Hotmail. Once you have that, you can sign in. When you sign in, you come to there. There'll be a number of products that'll come up. What you're interested in is Windows Server 2012 R2, and it says evaluation for 180 days. Once you've signed in, you see the download button, and you can click on download. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to click it again. So now we're ready to start our installation. So we're going to start first with the VMware. So I'll go to my downloads. And I'll look for VMware. So this is VMware right here. So you can right click and click on run as administrator. If you own your laptop, you won't have a problem with this. If it's not your laptop, you might need a administrative password to do that. Right, okay. But if you don't right click and run as an administrator you could double click if it allows you to go then that's good so after that you can hit next accept this is a very straightforward installation and no I don't need enhanced features I don't want any complexity so next check for products yeah leave all these ones help improve VMware no I don't want to send any report so I'm gonna just click Uncheck that. Create short codes, yes. Start menu, programs folder, yes, that's fine. Install. So this is going to be a very fast installation. It doesn't take a long time. So our installation is complete. I'll hit finish. And I believe that's, that's done. VMware yeah so if you go to your search bar and click on VMware you'll see VMware come up and this is how it will look like so you won't have all these ones these are servers that are already created before so it just picked up the settings automatically when I reinstalled it so but in your own case you won't have all of this it's just gonna be blank and you have home right on the home you would see different options what you're most concerned about is this create a new virtual machine and that's what you want to do now I am going to be doing this with a um, assumption that you have finished downloading the uh, the Windows Server I mean this one right here Windows Server I already have mine um, downloaded so if I click on new um, new virtual machine you would see installer disk image file ISO that's what you downloaded right so hit browse and direct it to the location so you can hit browse like that and then you know in my own case it's just brought me by default to the location where I downloaded it you can see it's taking me to the downloads folder and this is the disk so I uh, click on it and open so the next thing I want to do is hit next and I can name this um, SQL server 
that's what I want to name it and in my own case I don't want it to be on my C drive and the reason for this is because my computer is actually oh, oh it's been free <laughs> as I yesterday it was so red you know so I think you it, it became free after I dis uh, did a restart but still I have a lot of uh, disk space in other drives so I'm just gonna direct it elsewhere and meanwhile in my own case I mean I like to do things you know in a very very organized manner so what I did was I came to my D drive and then I created this folder so you you may it's not necessary but you may want to do similar thing so you could just right click you know create new folder like that and then you could just specify the name of the folder virtual machines yeah and yeah you can do something like that so I'll, I'll delete this and the reason for this is so simple you see the virtual machines you're creating they're just files right they're just files look these are the machines that I created before and this is what you would see VMDK files okay so I mean that's just the architecture that's the way it is so so now that we have our virtual machine folder so I'm just gonna browse there so it's D drive I have virtual machine so I can decide that I want to put it inside a, a, another folder inside virtual machine so I just name it SQL uh, server I'll select that click OK and click next and you can specify how much of disk space you want to give to it now it's giving you a recommendation that recommended size for Windows Server 2012 is 60 gig and in my case I want to store it as a single file you can choose to do multiple uh, multiple files it doesn't really matter it's only told you that splitting the disk makes it easier to move the virtual machine to another computer but may reduce performance with very large disk we're not using very large disk so we'll be we don't actually need um, splitting the files anyway we're not doing any migration projects or anything like that so I'll just say single file is fine click next and I want to power on the virtual machine after creation and I'll click finish so this is actually going to take a long time and it's asking me if, if I want to install some tools I do want to install them so I'll say yes download and install I'll maximize this so I'll be pausing the video from time to time because it's actually going to take a very long time so you know you would see okay so it will bring us to this page now notice that the screen is quite small okay we're going to fix this once the installation is complete but for now bear with me you can zoom if you want to if you can and what I'm really just selecting is the language so I'm selecting English United Kingdom because that's where I am and I will click next and I'll click install now and here it's gonna ask us do we want server core or we want um, a server with a GUI now what core means is we won't have graphical user interface where we can click next 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 like this everything will be command prompt we don't want that we want something with a GUI so I'll just click the last one which is evaluation with GUI and hit next and I would accept the terms click next and what I want to do is custom install not upgrade so the second option is what I want then I will just leave everything as it is here and click next and this is the part that I was actually referring to that will take a very long time to complete it also depends on the configuration of your computer if you have a good 
um, size of um, processor you know all those things really matter so now we have our server completely downloaded so you can put your password I'm gonna do mine and make sure you remember your password this is the administrator's account if you don't remember this password you will never be able to log on to this server finish now something I need to let you know um, anytime you try to work on this and for some reason you can't find your cursor what you have to do is click on control and alt so let's say for example you you can't see this cursor that's moving around let's say it's gone away if you click if you hit control alt together it will come back on so bear that in mind now another thing you should note again is it says here press control plus alt plus delete if you do that it will affect your main computer right because don't forget this is a virtual computer so if you press this command let me do that now so you see you can see that this is my main laptop and it is trying to lock out or sign out or something like that so I've hit cancel but to be able to to get past that what you should do is press control alt insert so if you press control alt insert like that this is what you would see and then you'll be able to put in your password alternatively you can come to the top left you see this icon right here if you hover over it it says send control alt delete so that's what it's gonna help you to do here it will help you to send the command to the virtual machine and if you click if you click on that it will take you to the page where you put your password so now we have our server as you can see even though it's really small uh, like I promise we're going to fix that all we need to do with that is um, let me quickly do that now click on this uh, file explorer windows explorer once that come up you would see the D drive double click on that and double click on the setup no no that's not what we want actually it shouldn't it shouldn't be looking like this it should look grayish so it looks like the the tools that we installed before did not install completely or didn't finish so what you would do in this case is because this dvd drive thing shouldn't be blue like this it should be gray so come to to player and manage and click on install vmware tools so in case you had that that's that's what you would do so you can see that that has changed to gray so if you double click on that now then you should have this pop up preparing VMware tools installation so we need to do this for us to be able to enlarge our screen back if we don't um, we might not be able to do that so you you can see this blinking thing here so you can click on that and you get this box so hit next and you want to do complete hit next install and wait for this to complete installation uh, okay we're waiting for this to complete the installation okay now so it's done so you can just click finish and now you're gonna have to restart the computer to complete all these things so we're back to that same page again it's restarted and remember control alt insert control alt insert and then put your password
so the last bit of the configuration is to right click on this space this blank gray space and then you will see screen resolution so hit on that screen resolution and scroll down you would see resolution so currently we're on 1024 768 so you want to bring it up so take it all the way to the top all the way to the top enter and apply so you can see we're getting bigger gradually so you can click on it again and drag it further up so we can stop somewhere here apply keep changes and that's it so now we have our full server fully configured so as you can see we have our windows icon here you know you, it's it's exactly another computer within your computer you can see let me let me drag it around for you so everything that you can do on your laptop is what you can do here again okay so now that we have this there are two more things we we want to do that I'm gonna have to show you remember we installed we downloaded rather we downloaded SQL uh, where is it okay so remember we downloaded this SQL EXPR DV advanced so the question comes to you that how do I move this file into the virtual machine because this is our main RDBMS engine that we want to install so what I normally do is I map a a drive inside the virtual machine and what that means is so that if I open up this just the same way as I can open up folders within my virtual machine I want to be able to open up folder and get into my laptop so to do this you see what I mean by that so at the end of the day we're gonna have an additional folder here which will be um, like it will contain things from your laptop so you can easily move files around with that so to do that you want to come to player and then you want to go to settings is what I'm looking for so this is a manage virtual mach machine settings So once you get there, go to options and this is where we, you want to go, shared folders. Currently it's disabled. So we want to enable it. So we want always enabled and you want to click on map as network drive. All right. Okay. So now before we now add, because we're going to have to click on this add, before we add, let's go back to our laptop our laptop folder which is this one and we're going to create a folder so let me create a folder here uh, okay so this is one I normally use virtual file share so as you can see there's only one folder in there so this virtual file share so let's assume it wasn't created before so you can create your own folder and name it and then you will come here and click on add click on next and browse to that same folder I just showed you so we're going to look for virtual file share and click OK and you can leave it the same name if you say read only that means you can edit you can delete you can't do anything but from within the virtual machine but I want to be able to have full control over it so I won't click on read only enable this share finish and then OK so as you can see the folder automatically comes up here within our 
our virtual machine so if I click on this it just takes me straight into our virtual file share and then you can see the things there so what I want to do now is to move that SQL file which is from our download and it's this one I'll right click and let me cut because I don't want to have um, multiple copies of the file so go to D drive virtual file share and I'll just drop it in here So we have that there and boom that's it so if we go back into our virtual machine and open this open this you would find it there so now that we have our installation media what you want to do is right click run as administrator uh, actually let's let's cancel out let's copy this onto the desktop copy it let's take it, bring it straight into our virtual machine desktop so that um, we don't run it from the network while while that is copying uh, let me create some files some folders rather okay so if you go to Mm, is that need to do that? Yeah, let me just do that inside our desktop. Create a new folder. And name this SQL. Just SQL. So that's where I'm going to put our database files. So right click so now that this is on our desktop so I can right click and run as administrator okay so now that that finished running you can see it created an additional folder on the desktop let me minimize this so you can see uh, let's refresh so this is the folder that I created this is the new one that got created as a result of running this you see so we just wait for keep waiting for it to continue with its operation then you see this box come up so you can drag it to the middle where you can see and you see there are a couple of options on the left so there is planning installation maintenance tools resources options what you're in interested in is the installation and on the right hand side you see new sql server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation you're not upgrading you're creating a new installation so click on that and you see this box come up so accept license terms um, I don't turn on customer experience Click next it will check some rules so if everything is fine it comes to this page use Microsoft update to check for updates recommended yes next So if all the um, the checks go well successfully, you will see this page. And what this is telling you is these are all the features that comes with this installation media that we downloaded. So there are so many technologies that um, SQL Server have. So it's going to ask you which one do you want to work with. So we're not working with replication. We are not going to be working with full texts we are not well we will be working with reporting services so we'll leave that and this is the part for management studio 
so if you uncheck this you won't have man management studio so you can leave every other thing as it is so the only thing you want to just remove basically is SQL Server replication and uh, full text and semantic extraction for search so this is the root directory for the installation and you leave that as default click on next okay so if you get to this page it's saying microsoft.net framework service pack 1 is required so what you want to do is come to server manager so there is there's an icon right here come to server manager and drag it to the middle you can you can enlarge it if you want and go to add roles and features so if this comes up click on next 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 then you want to look for dot net next this is what you're looking for dot net framework next and install and now we have this completed so you can close when it's done so we can go back to our let's minimize this so you can come back here and rerun so that works fine so the next thing you want to do is let me let me quickly explain to you the difference between default instance and named instance now named instance is the one that comes with your installation by default so in this case we have SQL Express so if you installed another version it, it, it won't be a SQL Express most likely it will be MSQL server right so you know typically it's either you find this or you find this for default instance right okay so uh, let me remove this so okay so this is our default instance and you can ah I mean sorry no 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 sorry default instance I, I beg your pardon default instance is what I mean so default instance this is how you you find it it's still the same thing like I said earlier on that you find it MSQL server so in, in some instances you would find this as the uh, n default instance and in some cases you find this at the as the default default instance so in this case what we have is SQL Ex Express as our default instance and you can only have one default instance per server right so we have this server right now if we want to have more than one instances of SQL server we can as a matter of fact we can have up to I think it's 32 you can have as much as 32 different installation of SQL Server on one computer but after you install the first one which happens to be the default instance if I were to install another one which is the second one it would be named instance so by then I won't be able to call it this I, I could call it anything I want I could call it my name diary I could call it 3x point you know you, you can name it anything that you like so in this case because it is our first installation I would just make it default instance I mean even if it's your first installation and you want to choose to use the named instance you can still do that but the moment you put an installation on the computer and it becomes and it's the default one then you cannot have any second default instance anymore it's going to be just one so in this case I'll leave it as default and I'll go to the next so there are validation errors on this place on this page click OK to close the box and review the errors so click OK instance ID cannot contain spaces so it 
it found a space somewhere so I think it's because of this space that's why so let's click on next and that works so now we get to a page where it's asking us for um, some service accounts so you would be hearing service account a lot when you get to work so service account is just a user account that would be running the database engine so th there are two engines that will be installing here so we're having the reporting services engine and we're having the database engine so it's asking us what sort of accounts do we want to use I would say just leave it at default so NT service MS SQL server is a default so you leave it at that now for collation we'll also leave it at collation but let me just you know quickly explain to you what we mean by collision collision typically just um, tells the database engine what sort of language and accent you want it to have so the default is Latin 1 general and CI means case insensitive so if you want your installation to be case sensitive you know you could just customize it and you have a bunch of selections that you can you know pick from here different languages and you can specify the case sensitivity which is that you can decide on the accent so accent sensitivity you know there's some languages that you know when you see e it has a, an accent on top of the uh, character so you want the database engine to be accent sensitive then you click on on this so this is where you configure the latin one general uh, collision for the database engine so the default is that one general cias so i'm going to leave it at that you know pretty much leave everything at default i just wanted you to know the meaning of all these things you're looking at so when we go to the next page it says server configuration and this configuration is asking us what sort of authentication do we want Windows authentication or mixed mode Windows authentication there's another video which I have done and we explained in detail what Windows authentication mode is and, and um, the other type of authentication which is SQL Server authentication so by the time we start talking about connecting to SQL Server you would understand in detail the differences between the two but for now just leave it at um, I'll say mix mode yes leave it at mix mode and then you specify a password okay specify a password and um, if you don't have this come up you can just click on this to add current user but because I already have it I'm not gonna click on anything data directories you need to go in here and that's the essence of this other folder that I created earlier on SQL because that's where I want my data to go to so the root data directory I would just um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll remove everything and say D colon backslash and if you notice the, f the moment I put D every other thing here changed if you didn't notice you can rewind the video and you would see it wasn't D before so by putting this D it just changed but hey that we we don't actually have a D drive so there's no point putting D had it been we had another drive we do have a D drive but you know this is not a local drive this is this is you know something else entirely I mean proper disk drive with some space in it like this C but because this is a network drive which remember what we did earlier on we can't use that one either so but because we have only C so I'm going to select C so what I'll do is I would just click on browse here and go to my desktop so because I want this SQL folder that I um, created earlier on so I'll click on OK so now as you can see again everything has changed and it has taken 
everything to that direction that's just what I want you don't need to touch anything here this place is enough so just direct it to the new folder that you created and user instances you can leave that as default file stream don't enable file stream we don't need that and that's it that's all you need to know as far as this uh, configuration is concerned so click on next and it's asking you for reporting services do you want to install and configure or install only I'll leave it at install and configure and click next and that's pretty much everything so installation is in progress and by the time it's complete it will tell you it's complete so now we have our installation almost completed This actually takes a very long time depending on the configuration you have on your server mm, so if you bring up task manager you can see the performance of your server and see how it's doing look on performance so we're using up 75 percent of memory CPU is taking 30 percent and don't forget this are the resources for the virtual machine and not the main laptop which is the host computer okay okay so looks like we have a successful installation right here so now we can click out and say close and close and close up close out everything so if you click on the windows button for the virtual machine this windows here is for the laptop for the main computer but this one is for the virtual machine and then if you come to this search box and type SSMS see management studio comes up and you can click on that and then you see the tool starting up so while that is starting up I'll minimize this there's one more thing we need to download which is the um, that's that's the adventure works database we're going to be working with that a lot so go to Google and click on uh, type in download adventure works what we want is for 2014 because we downloaded 2014 SQL server so it has to be compatible with the same version so um, it's actually a Microsoft product it's like adventure works is like a company that sells bicycles and accessories and a lot of things like that they manufacture and sell those things so they have a database that models a proper company so it's like a test test database that we'll be working with so you can come to codeplex it's you know actually being made available through codeplex and then if you come here you would see you can uh, what we're looking for is 2014 this page is actually taking us to 2012 and 20 2008 that's not what we want so I'll cancel that this uh, let me just go for the first one 
okay so it, it, it automatically downloads so there we have it so I can open this show in folder takes me straight to the folder where it's downloading if I re refresh okay so we have it now what I'm gonna do is I'll right click and cut it and take it into remember our virtual file share and drop it in there so that I can go back into my virtual machine okay so adventure work has opened you see this box so server name that's the name of your server windows authentication leave it at the default just click on connect right so let me open up this and go into this folder of virtual file share so this is the adventure works I just downloaded so click on it you come up you see extract so extract it extract all and extract and this is the file that will be provided onto us so what we want to do now is copy this backup file uh, and then just drop it on your desktop okay so now because the file we have is a backup file so we're going to restore it onto this database so if you click on databases and then click on databases like that so that this blue highlight comes up right click and go for restore database so you would see this box come up what you want to click on is device and this little box right here click on it another box comes up click on add okay um, I'm having a little bit of issue with my display so ideally you would see a number of um, icons here that you can click and navigate to where you're going to but in this situation I'm going to have to improvise and how I will do that is by coming to my desktop folder and copy no if I do this it's just gonna say desktop I know the file path to get to my desktop like this so to get there I will go into C drive I'll go to users administrator and desktop so I, w I just need the file path so I'm gonna copy this copy this file path and I will put it here I'll remove this and paste it here then this there's a refresh button here if I refresh uh, no it took it back don't refresh let's just leave it here and let me go back in here and right click on the f the database file right click on this database file and rename select all select all is norm uh, what I did was control A control A so copy and paste so now you see the OK button has come up so click OK so you can see it's there OK right uh okay for some reason this is having a little bit of issue okay i know what the problem is i think it doesn't like this dot bak that comes along with it so i'll remove and go through the process again
so I'm copying it without the dot BAK uh, okay click OK click OK whoops it's not seeing it okay All right uh, let me do a little bit of troubleshooting and post the video and come back okay so what it is is we have to um, enlarge this maximize so for some reason because it was minimized you know you can see some edges you can see that some things are trying to show but it's not coming up and um, I guess that's as a result of the screen resolution that um, I have chosen so but at least if you enlarge it like this if you ever have the same problem if you enlarge it like this you will understand that um, it's possible to now see what you couldn't see before right so I want to get to desktop so to do that you have to go to C drive users because I'm administrator I'll just click on administrator and okay there's more actually okay so what I've had to do is um, it wasn't working within the virtual machine um, and that's because of some screen resolution thing if you have the same problem just um, send an email to support at 3xpoint.com or you send us a, a, a message on Facebook but if it does work for you this is what you would see so if you go to users and then navigate to your username so in the case of the virtual machine it would have been administrator and then you go to desktop when you get to desktop which is where the file is what you should see is this you should see this like that and once you cl click on that you can now click OK so this is what I expected to happen and then you can click OK alright and you can see that on top of it right here it says ready and your adventure works and everything and you can just click OK but because I already have the database I, uh, I won't if I click OK it will fail obviously because it, it, it already exists but in your own case you can just click OK and you know everything will be fine so actually mine is even working it's just overwriting the existing um, database that I have so this is what you would have restored successfully and you can click out and that's it so for for my virtual machine it didn't work because uh, of some resolution problem the file couldn't come up here but you know I've just shown you what exactly you should need to do so but the other way to do this is to bring the the database on here using um, SQL code so you don't need to worry about that but um, if you need the code as well um, you can send an email I can send the code to you and all you need to do is just paste the code in here and click execute it will install the database on there for you so once that database is there this is what it will look like so you can click on the node and you would find AdventureWorks 2014 database you click on the node for that as well you can see tables views and all manner of things so that's it so this is how to set up your environment completely from A to Z if you're using um, a Mac OS 10 it's the same process the only difference is just that you would install VMware Fusion instead of workstation player and that would be it so see you in the next movie